Hey guys, Amanda here. Alright, for this video I'd like to take a little bit of a different turn. Um, it's still tying into mental illness as long as you apply it this way, but it's also just in general anyway. And it, part of it I guess you could use it towards, you know, DBT or whatnot, but I just wanted to talk about this because I thought it was um, an interesting topic and I want to talk about it, so I'm going to. <laughs> and I got this idea because when I was at my, um, when I took my son to his therapist appointment, she has a, um, a bookshelf in her back room and has a bunch of different books on a bunch of different topics and I happened to come across a few of these books and things and I liked the topic um, so I wanted to talk about it and that's what I'm gonna do so this is the book and it is called nonviolent communication a language of life create your life your relationships and your world in harmony with your values by Marshall B Rosenberg PhD so I'm I'm not going to start at the beginning. I'm going to start at a place that I find very um, interesting for myself. I just happen to like it. So I'm going to start there. <laughs> and I think it's very important anyway, just, just in general, because it's something that our culture does all the time. Lots of people do it all the time. I've done it, you know, and I just think it's a, a good thing to have this um, in your mind and be aware of this <clears throat> so you can recognize it for yourself when it happens and excuse me sorry so you can um, you know be able to recognize it and deal with it when it comes up in the best way you can alright so I want to talk about um, denial of responsibility and this is through communication this is what this book is but it also talks about you know thoughts emotions and, and all kinds of different things so I am going to take some things from the book and also speak freely as well I don't want people to think I'm plagiarizing this is not my stuff this belongs to this person I am just trying to informed just a little bit more um, through my perspective and also using what this person has written. Okay, so the language that we use, some of the phrasing and the, and the different words that we use um, has a tendency to kind of block our own consciousness or awareness um, of our own personal responsibility of our actions, emotions, and thoughts. And I want to give a couple examples of phrases. There's two. And then I want to talk about, um, I want to read an actual example that this person gives in the book. Okay, so number one, this example is the phrase have to, when you use have to in a sentence. This implies and kind of illustrates like how the personal responsibility with that sentence, with the with the have to, like I have to make the bed, for example, or I have to cook breakfast, or I have to go to work, or I have to fill in the blank, whatever. Um, any kind of sentence that has that phrasing in it. When you hear the word, when you hear that, the person is actually distancing themselves from the personal responsibility of the choice. And because it's in our language all the time, we're so used to hearing it <laughs> that we don't think twice about it. Um, so it basically 
it clouds our responsibility in our everyday language. So number two is a statement, you make me feel, fill in the blank. Um, and this one, it, it, it also encourages the denial of responsibility for our thoughts and our emotions with that particular phrasing. So what this person, like, you know, I'm going to read it, but basically what this person does is they go around, they do a lot of work, and they try to help people to replace the language that they're using, which implies lack of choice, with language that acknowledges choice. So you're not blaming anybody, you're focusing on yourself, your choices, and all, and your responsibility. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. Soothing. Soothing pleasures are the best. Tea soothes the soul. <laughs> right now it's soothing my throat. Because <laughs> it has honey in it. Anyway. So, and he also says in another little blurb, um, we are dangerous when we are unaware of our responsibility for our emotions, thoughts, and actions. So, the example that I want to read that this person wrote, it gives a lot of other things, but um, I don't want to, like, read the entire book. I just want to give an example. And it's best if I just read it outright because it, it makes better sense. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. Another time when I was consulting for a school district, a teacher remarked, I hate giving grades. I don't think they are helpful and they create a lot of anxiety on the part of students, but I have to give grades. It's the district policy. We had just been practicing how to introduce language in the classroom that heightens consciousness of responsibility for one's actions. I suggested that the teacher translate the statement, I have to give grades because it's district policy, to I choose to give grades because I want, etc. She answered without hesitation, I choose to give grades because I want to keep my job. While hastening to add, I don't, but I don't, but I don't like saying it that way. It makes me feel so responsible for what I'm doing. That's why I want you to do it that way, I replied. Because when she took that sentence, I have to do it because it's policy, to I choose or, um, what did she say? Yeah, I choose to give grades because she wants to keep her job. And then she said, but when I say it that way, I don't like how I feel. Because I feel responsible for what I'm doing by giving grades. Well, that's the point. She's, instead of denying responsibility, she's acknowledging her responsibility in the role that she is taking. And that is part of um, what I wanted to talk about sometimes with being aware. And, you know, I did make a, a video, was it last year, year before? I don't know, it's called Taking Responsibility. And it kind of, and it touches on that a little bit, but I just want people to be aware of that, or try this yourself. You know, try taking the sentences that you say where you are denying your responsibility and acknowledging it. Take that sentence that I just said, take whatever you're saying and translate it to what this person suggested. You know, what was it again? Just so you guys have it. Um, whoa. Okay. Just so you can practice this. So instead of saying... I have to 
do such and such because try changing the sentence to I choose to blah 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 because and state your sentences that way like to yourself or pick up on it if you have kids you know especially teenagers and they're like oh well so and so did it try it with them try to get yourself or your children or whoever to use the language in a taking responsibility way acknowledging it that way they're not blaming but they're taking responsibility which is actually going to help people you me everybody if we take responsibility for ourselves because as adults we have to <laughs> I know I just said that didn't I okay I choose to take responsibility as an adult because I want to be successful see I just owned it I was just talking about it and then I accidentally said it in the way that denied my responsibility then I flipped it around and I took responsibility so that wasn't planned it actually happened accidentally but there you go there's an example I apologize for my throat I was sick and my throat is still bleh. I still have this cough and I don't know I'm not I'm not really happy with that so that's why I haven't been making videos because I was sick I didn't feel well lots of crap happened and I sound I sound like this <clears throat> but I wanted to make it anyway <laughs> all right well I hope this was helpful I hope that it enlightened you or you became aware of stuff that you didn't even realize or whatever or maybe you hated this whatever <laughs> but I'm putting it out there anyway all right you guys take care and I'm gonna finish my sleepy time tea with honey and then I'm going to bed <laughs> all right I love you guys take care bye